Okay, thanks for tuning in to uh, this video, which is number two in a series uh, re repairing, restoring, however you want to look at it, some of the older Akai samplers. And um, here I'm just sharing my experiences and things that I have found that work for me. Um, there's no big technical um, breakthrough here. It's pretty simple stuff. Uh, changing components and looking at the ones which are most likely to fail first because of time and use. So uh, I'm going to be sharing that. We're going to be getting inside the S1000 here and the S900 below it and the S950. I've already done and it worked a treat. So mm, might be onto something. You know, the 1000 may be more complex. Uh, we'll see. So uh, in the right rack here, obviously, S1000, S900, S950, um, all repaired or awaiting repair. Uh, moving to the left-hand side here, uh, S5000, S3000 XL, and S2000. You can see the S2, uh, S3000 XL. It is on, but it's pretty, pretty dim, so that one's going to benefit from... A backlight replacement which if you go onto YouTube is dead easy and the kits are so cheap right now so uh, I've been using uh, the 950 so I haven't really needed to use the 3000 right now but it's something that I want to do and again the, the S900 uh, its backlight is poof, you know it's not there so uh, there's uh, something that needs to be looked at there um, I'll probably do some videos on that, although there are some really good ones on, on YouTube. So the samplers here on the left all work. Um, I, I, I've got a memory of having to do something with the 2000. And uh, you will find that it's if the older samplers are the ones that, that you know, may, may need the attention. Uh, it's just basic physics. These components don't last forever and they're hourly rated, especially the capacitors. So we're going to be looking at the right rack. I'm going to be getting these this guy out the thousand at the top and um, showing you guys um, what to look at first moving right along it's get this case off time I'm going to show you guys how to do it um, those of you who are keen to get involved and get into the sampler you've probably been in there once before so it's not rocket science but I'm going to I'm going to include it for the people that um, aren't sure what's involved that they're assessing whether or not they should uh, to do this or not so get your sampler out the uh, S1000 um, you got to get the uh, rack ears off the uh, same as the uh, 900 you got to get the rack ears off before you can get the case off so let's get these guys off ah there we go so actually you don't need to get the rack ear off on the 1000 they've cut away the box i'm going to continue anyway sometimes i like to stand the sampler on the side when i'm working on them and that's not going to be possible with the rack ears on it's all coming back okay so more screws on the bottom of the case, on the side, on the lower edge, rather. This camera is kind of right in front of me here, so just because it won't uh, zoom out any more than it is, so hopefully it's, it's watchable. One side done. Other side. And the back. Just a wee screw there. This has got the wrong screw in it, by the looks of it. I think it came to me minus some bits. Don't go too mad with the with the drill, especially when you're doing screws up on these things. I prefer to use a screwdriver doing things up. Okay, so I'm gonna um probably raise the tripod up in a minute, but yep case off and we can have a look at what we got. I'm going to stand the sampler up on its side like I said because that gives us a really good 
clear view of uh, what we're going to be looking at today. So I'm going to raise this tripod up. Just bear with me. It's not that easy. Okay, that's where we want to be. So what I would say, obviously the <laughs> the obvious, not obvious to everyone, if you're going to be going inside something like this, power cable out, and even then, it's not that safe. Capacitors are like batteries, they store power. A very old unit may have um, no uh, no st stored power in the, in the caps. Uh, if you're working on them, you've probably been turning it on and off a few times. Anticipate that the capacitors and the circuit board that they are mounted to uh, as being dangerous, uh, it can give you a thump. And um, to be honest with you, I have accidentally crossed the circuit board chassis or the pins on the back of the power stage circuit board on the 5000 with the chassis when I, I think when I was doing it up. And it went bang and I thought I'd ruined the unit and luckily for me I had not. So just bear that in mind, if you don't value your own safety, think about your sampler. <laughs> it's like, we don't want to ruin the sampler, do we? So let's just have a little talk about what we can see here. Sorry if the light's a bit too bright for you all. We have uh, power comes in to the circuit board. Let's get this a bit closer, I think. Yeah, we're gonna need that light, I think. Power comes in from Right hand side here. I'm gonna try and lower the brightness of that light. Comes in there, hits this circuit board, uh, which has got a relay on there, and a fuse, glass fuse you can see there. Uh, runs off up this cable here to the front chassis switch. And if we turn your sampler on, uh, comes back into the same board that it left from activates the relay and then initiates power across these pins which run to this transformer here. This runs to the main board and uh, magical things happen. So what we're going to be looking at today is uh, the what I call the power stage board. I don't know if that's what it's called. That's what I call it. And it has all sorts of goodies on there which uh, I have been changing uh, with great success when they go dead. So I'm going to pause the video briefly here and uh, spin this spin this kitty around. In fact, you know, let's just let's just dive in. So it's got no power cable in; it hasn't been turned on in a long time. So I'm going to look to remove the power stage board, and to do that, we're going to need to free up some of the cables and the connectors that are um, in place. So we're going to these are all different connectors, as you can see. Um, so it's very, very hard to get them mixed up. You can see here I had labeled these guys as they have the same connector going to the power board. So I would recommend taking pictures before you do any of this stuff. So let's get that. In fact, that one can stay, that one can stay in there because that goes to the switch, as can that one, but we need to disconnect this short pair. Um, I'm just gonna clip this light just so I stop waving it around a bit okay let's just turn that around okay I'm trying to find the best view here <laughs> the light just fell over really professional All right so let's get this guy undone okay so that is that link <coughs> undone. This guy here is undone and there is now nothing else holding, uh, connecting this, the power stage board. So let's spin the thing around and I'm gonna show you what you need to undo to take it out. Nice rusty chassis. This is really common on these things. Um, the zinc coating um, 
did not last forever and this was out this was out in the weather so it's it's um, hardly surprising but you will find it even on units that have been um, indoors so the two screws that you need to undo on the 1000 are to release that power stage board are these two <coughs> excuse me again posies so let's just whiz them out and I'm going to support the back of the board with my hand plonk plonk okay I'm going to spin it round and I'll show you removing it memory there was another one that needed to be undone so that's not moving ah here we go so this guy here there's a screw on the side of the chassis this has got to come out as well that's right I have a really shit memory for this stuff it's pretty obvious though if you're going through it there it is she's coming out Keep your screws safe. Okay. Let's uh, just change this things a bit here. There we go. I'm gonna bring that a little bit closer. All right. Here's the thing full of capacitors and stuff, resistors, etc. So what I'm going to say is, let's have a look at the kind of things to be looking for if you're first going in here, and uh, let's start looking at the capacitors. I'm going to get a pointer, and uh, try to make sure it's not conductive. In this case, it is going to be. It's going to be a pen. So I'm going to zoom in, and to the keen eye, you're going to be able to see straight away that my phone just fell off the stand. Did you see that? Yeah, only for the keen eye on that one. 